Hi, we're going to take a look at lab 2.0.4, installing a virtual machine on your personal computer. There is a instructional video that is included. However, there's a little bit about that that's been updated on the file side. So I thought it might be helpful for us to go through the 2.0.4 lab together. The first thing you want to check on your computer is to make sure that you do have an extra four gigabyte of RAM and 50 gigabytes of free disk space. You'll need that to have room to run your virtual machine on your computer to complete these labs. Also, high speed internet helps to download the images and the program to run the virtual machine. It will take about an hour to download the virtual machines, not quite as long to download VirtualBox. So the first thing we want to do here is go to the VirtualBox website. You'll select to download VirtualBox 7.0. As soon as you click that, it will take you to your options. If you're on a Windows computer, you will select the first one. If you're on an Apple device, you'll select the second one. Most people are not already running Linux or Solaris or IPS. So uh, once you select it, give it a few moments to download. It may ask you when you go to install it to install the extension pack. If that's so, you'll select this link it will download all of the extension packs that will work for either Apple or Windows. I don't think that we're going to need the software developer kit. If we do, there's the link to download it. Once you have that installed, if you still continue to get errors saying that you need other software installed, the VirtualBox 6.1 build seems to have a little bit less requirements. Uh, it's not as advanced as the 7, so it's up to you. If you select the, the older builds, it's the same option. Here's your Windows, here's your Apple selections, and the extension packs that would be required for those. We'll go back to the Cisco page, go down to the next link, which is step two, we're going to download our image file. In our directions here, it tells us to download two separate images, the CSC Lab VM and the Security Workstation. When you click the link to go to the downloads, you'll scroll down past the packet tracer to the second option. So you're going to download the virtual machine file. If you have Windows, you'll select the first option. If you have Apple device, you'll select the second option. However, to simplify everything, it tells us that they have now combined all of these machines into a single virtual machine. You do not need to download and install multiple virtual machines, only this one. Once you've got that downloaded, and this will take approximately an hour. It may go a little quicker if you have really great internet. It may go a little slower if you have slower internet. But at this point, once you start to download this, you may just want to walk away and get you a sandwich. <laughs> and come back to it, leave your computer running, it will download. Once you have downloaded, you'll go back to your virtual box. These machines will not be shown here. If you're on VirtualBox 6.1, the older version, you may see two options here to import or export an appliance. The newer one, version 7.0, they've moved the import export under the file option. 
So you'll select the import appliance, go to your file manager. Most people's are gonna go to your downloads, but if you've selected your downloads to go somewhere else, you'll find your download. Select which virtual machine that you want to install. You can absolutely go ahead and download the other virtual box machines, but this Cybersecurity Lab VM workstation is the only one that we will need for this class. Select it, select to open, and it will then import your machines. Once it's imported, I'm going to cancel this because I already have it. Once you've imported it, you just need to start it. It takes just a second to start up and it will notify you that it's starting, depending on the version as to where it shows you that it's, that it's starting up. We're going to look at the desktop on this virtual machine. Cisco Home just shows us what our files are. Very similar to a Windows machine. You have your desktop files, your documents, and your downloads. The file system looks very similar to a Windows device. If you want to play around with that and kind of look through what options you have there, you do want to make sure that your web browser works because we will be using that in some later labs. So I'm just going to load Wikipedia just to make sure that I can get to the internet. You can play with that and, and search the internet some just to make sure it'll go to the web pages you want it to go to. The JCrypt tool we'll be using later, as well as the Wireshark. Terminal looks an awful lot like the command line prompt in Windows, and it acts a lot of the same. Some of the commands are different, but we're going to check our IP address. On this device, we've got two different IP addresses. One is our loopback interface. And that's 127.0.0.1 with a subnet of slash 8. Our other IP address, the one that gets us to the internet, is 10.0.2.15 with a subnet of slash 24. Your IP address may vary, but it's going to look very similar and be laid out the same way. If you want to select to close window by choosing the uh, X in the upper right hand corner, that's great. Most of the time I find when I'm in the command line, I prefer to use the command to close it, which is exit. And then press enter and it closes. Your keyboard program is if you wanted to change your keyboard layout. DPI scaling, I don't recommend that we select that if you do your menu option at the bottom of your screen is going to disappear you can shut this machine down by selecting menu and turning off the device just like you would in windows however if you want to save the state if you're working on a lab and you want to come back to it you'll use the file option at the top so when you say file close, it asks you if you want to save the machine state or shut it down or just turn off the machine completely. So we're going to save the state, press OK. It will safely shut down the VM and save it in the state that we left it in. I hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to message me or comment and I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Thanks a lot. You guys have a great day.